nuclear. You heard ZTR when he was uh, having that little pregame interview before talking about the fact that, that yeah, look, there was a couple of mistakes we made. Uh, we don't. He said we don't need Plopsky. I, I think what he was going with there was he doesn't need to drop almost yeah, 40. You can't kills. ask him to do that again. And they're still confident that they can get the win here. So, oh, okay. That was very quick. The flash is over. The pistols are pushing forward, but... Two kills from the USPs is great. Three oh, is even better. Yeah, three is getting beyond the pale. Sanji's down. Jane was long. He hasn't been able to scavenge a weapon. They're being very loud about the rotate. If they keep on moving. Okay, oh. They spotted him out. But look at the damage Woo. they have managed to inflict. That's three players fully invested. Now sent back to spawn with 3.3. There will not be AKs across the board. Drop one from Plopski. I'm sure there we go. ZTR, ZTR can cover it. Well. Yeah. Okay, cool. So they just get there. The utility's good as well. And it's going to need to be. Because look at VP. They're buying in early. We can see the AWP in the hands of Jame. No diffuse kit. There's an org out, some light utility being bought around that, but this is mainly going to come down to the fights for VP. See how they're opting to defend this one. Just one player, Yakinda, over towards A on his lonesome. Never mind. James there as well. Interesting to see the angle James opted for there. What's he actually holding? Okay, just the close walk up. And <laughs> it couldn't be better. Hampus, a slight jiggle, but. An orc bullet in his skull and a first frag for VP in the buy. This is very quick pace right here. They've just walked on up and the fact that they're throwing bodies at it and not utility means the NIP were hoping to find a gap here. That's already been denied, so they might need a retool and Hampus, the in-game leader, is dead. Yakinda, lots to watch there with that cheeky angle. And he spots one long, so more pressure is being relayed over towards A, but once again, this is early, so there's still plenty of time for a rotation back. Why the hold over towards A, Yakinda and Jane? That's yeah, I scary. Was com kind of quite complimentary of the way that they're doing a passive, yet information is still being held. Jump peeking, Yakinda can clear out toilets to an extent. James is holding another passive line. So that's the first wave of utility. Will there be players behind it? Time to find out. Looks like it. Sanji's on the rotate. And Yakinda converts another. Oh. Oh. James catching the long player as well. The setup, flawless. Planning in the smoke. That doesn't feel great. That does though. Nork doubles up. Maybe there's a way. Nork and Plopsky reposition safe plant. Sanji from bank. If he finds Buster, it's a good angle and he jumps. His scroll wheel could be the death of them. NIP had no right to turn this one around. It was a 2v4. Far from over. Kick it from long. Sanji bank. Oh, and oh. Nork pockets some cash. $300, maybe the round. Plopsky's off angle is visible, and kick it goes down as well. What a win. Nork was silent on Inferno. Good to see him making a loud and proud statement early here for the ninjas in pajamas. That's a fumble right there. They thought they had such an advantage. The VP players on site, they both were glued to that plant going It was such down, a good right? setup. I mean, I think I started by talking all about how lovely that A setup was, and it worked so well. It gets two kills opening. Catches the long player. Yakinda catches the walk upon the site. This is where it starts going wrong. Jane thought he could punish the plant. Yakinda tried to fill the gap and trade. Nork hits a great shot as well. And NIP there are going to get a little bit loud in Stockholm. That's a good one to win. A very good round because you can see exactly what that has done. VP just down towards these pistols and they're going to be kicking themselves. That was a round where they didn't have the greatest of buys and they've actually just flashed each other just there, VP. Not... Uh, not the game plan I'm that they're looking for. Okay, so Plopsky's going to uh, go back, is he? He's holding the potential monster push? Because when you put five men up, when you're up against potential just P250s charging up monster for info, it can get a bit sketchy, but they have left Plopsky responsible for what will be eventually the underpass as well. Yeah, and they're already going to be at the front of A by the time this rotation comes through. So these footsteps stampeding back up through CT spawn and the tunnels is going to be heard. And that's actually making NIP... Set up a bit of an execute here. So smokes are going over, Molotovs to follow, and the flashbangs will be there as well. And look at this nade damage early, just landing on the domes of VP. Corralled them quite nicely there. So the stack from VP didn't net them anything whatsoever. The bomb will go down, and Yakinda's in the back line here. How many can he get with this? Is anybody expecting him this close? Ampus is not ready. Oh, oh Nork peeks into the crosshair as well. Just shy of the mark, Yakinda. Just the one Deagle frag to show James P250. What? Oh, hello. Constant. It looked like he was constantly moving from Rez's POV. Just bangs the head. I want a bit more here. They can still do damage to this economy because of how close the previous round was. So Yakinda hanging around, James too. No skin off their teeth. Just Deagle unarmored. 
Plumsky does catch him. This gun might get blown in the direction of James. I'm not sure if it was thrown around in the flurry of all of that. So he might be able to find something here off of Reza's dead body. No, it looks like they actually picked that one up. So tidying their rooms. Good boys, NIP. Making sure nothing can be scavenged there. And ZTI gets a molly kill and a UMP kill, right? This dice box molly's great. One over towards the truck. Oh, he was well, flashed as well. He had no idea. Hampus is flashed. Kick it had like 20 HP by the time his vision came back. Okay, a couple of, uh, I think they're NIP fans. I can't really tell. That's a Swee hunter. So I guess that's Swedish hunter. Yeah, but does that mean he's hunting the Swedes or he's a Swedish hunter? That's true. We'll have to do it a bit of investigation. <laughs> it could be go, it goes both there. ways. You've got to work that one out. North straight through. That's... Well, I've got confirmation it is NIP fans. Okay. So he's uh, a Swedish hunter. He's a Swedish hunter. Uh, owie, ouch. <laughs> CTR has opened up two rounds with two utility kills. And chiming with Hampus. So uh, he's definitely got that combo down. Mm, that's going to hurt. Yikinda might even get caught off guard here. You can see he was almost in the open there to this long push. He's still smoking off B. This is so quick. Yakinda. He's not right ready. here. He's not ready. Oh, <laughs> hey. Long, lads. Yo, long is a problem. Nork has opened it up big time. Smokes are down the round as well. VP lost. Hampus even wants a bit of a hunt. I don't blame him. Yeah, they're not getting out of here. I think keeping it relatively reserved. Sending the leader out to have a look. He swung the door open. They'll have heard the sound cue. They want to find a safe haven. Everything happened and they still have full nades, Alex, and they're already being hunted. Yeah, ZTR is actually going to stop them from this angle. Oh, sound cue. He loves it. Hi. Just one to find now. Everything's being ripped away from VP. Yeah, look, how, look at all that util. Everything kick up bought and they've even found him. Clean kills. Sending them back to the Bronze Age. But they did uh, more with less in the first gun round. So here, just taken off guard by the timing. That was really good stuff. Obviously, those grenades to open things up over towards B. When you jiggle peek out like that of your kinder and there's already two players just sitting and waiting, what are you even meant to do? Like, that's a minute 20 left on the clock. They've taken that very, very fast. And this means that VP in future rounds are going to have to play a little bit more aggressively on A, right? They might need three players there just hedging their bets to have two players holding that B defense because they are currently being punished across the board. 5-0 to o scoreline, timeout being taken, and I think this is a good time for it just to discuss where the holes have been, where have the real problems gone? Because we're 5-0, right? But only two gun rounds have been played. So you have to keep that context here. This is a great start from NIP. Still plenty of time for VP to turn this one around. Sanji can get on the board as well. Three players with over 100 ADR just there. James has bought into a scout, so we do know that the max loss bonus coming through of 3,400 next round will grant them a buy. Kick it onto a nade. There's some deagles in the mix. Smoke grenade as well, so... Let's see if they can make this a bit more competitive. Teams tend to play uh, a little bit differently when they're on these lower buys, or the smaller purchases take a couple more risks. I mean, dude, their USP round, they got three kills. That's right. And it involved a long aggression. See if Nork's going to be holding that. I think he is from playground, so Kinder won't be getting anything if he does step a toe out of line. You can see the slight diagonal of that long wall does present Yakinda with a slight off angle as they clear. It will be very frustrating if NIP go and execute B here without pushing forward into toilets and long for territory, because that's what they've done on the gun round. So this bait and switch setup, it needs to get something. Whether or not it's action, whether or not it's a kill, it would just be so frustrating to have to rotate back to the other side knowing you're locked out. Lovely Molly for that Guardian spot. Good restraint here. Oh, yeah. Nade looks promising, and so does the wall bank. Kick it switched on. He's aware. He's lost your kinder, and there's so good damage. damage. Yeah, James tagged another with the scout. And this is why you have to be so cautious, because this damage can accumulate and can be converted by any single one of them. Good angle again for a frag here. Just in the oh. nick of time, Plopsky waits for the bloom. He's playing it right. Sanji, however, baited in by Jane to an extent, and that enables him to find and finish off the job. Does need another one. Damage, poor Plopsky bleeding his way into the site at 4 HP. It should be an easy scout oh. tag. Okay, <laughs> Hampus, I think I'll forgive you for that one. It was an important frag to find. He takes the head off of Jane before things can go awry. Kick it on his flank, but Buster's okay. That's the high HP player. Up. And they are tagged, you're right. Hampus and Rez both within that scout and Deagle lethality range. Kick it coming in 
with the element of surprise onto Hampus. Look at the timing. It shouldn't. It couldn't be better. Kicker executes one. It gets real tough for oh. Rez, and he goes down. VP. They can do it with a little. The closest rounds we've seen from them, both the USPs, and now it was just scouts and deagles. NIP, they were so cautious. They had so much control, but just whittling away at those health bars. Yeah, great job. Great job there from VP. And they immediately changed up, knowing that Long and Toilets have been in a position they'd be getting punished. They were further forward, and they didn't get the result they were looking for early. Now this TK really does come does. back to bite them, right? It sticks out like a sore thumb after the fact, but... Until that point, it looked like NIP were able to, to net up this damage. They didn't look too concerned by it, but some great shooting and maybe, you know, not being aware of what was open for the pushes. Kick really Kickets had such awareness by going towards party side when he came out of underpass, just because he knows if you've gone long, you're not going to do such a deep clear. Really cool. Okay. Competitive, it seems. VP finding their first in our sixth. Need to win the gun rounds, though, here, VP, and you kinder forward. Ah, oh, that's Found. far from ideal. Yeah, well, the rifles are out and maybe the rounds will continue in a similar fashion. Just standing and melting. Hampus instantly dead. Did you see how quick that was? Yeah, that, was it double or a nade and a Molotov? That was a lot of damage just poured out immediately. And they even tried to extinguish. I just so didn't check him. A couple of uh, oopsies across the board. A couple of boo-boos. CTR walked on into Buster's crosshairs. NIP, despite finding the opening frag, have lost many soldiers on their way towards the sites. So Nork will recover the bomb. We've seen the capabilities of these individuals. Nork definitely does seem to have shaken off his underperformance on Inferno. Still two players on B here, so this is looking good for VP. Thirty-five. So it will be, a, I imagine, a walk-up monster, which is responsibility of Nork. At what point does Plopsky take contact? Though? Kick it in a very interesting angle. It's unlikely Plopsky will pre-aim this. Oh, he baited it though. Caught with a pin. Plopsky down to four, he's just going to have to scarper. He wants his AWP if he can save it, but that might be getting a little bit close to the action, so things better of it, gets on out. And that's going to be the second round for VP. So it didn't start great, but they turned it around. And I think Sanji's actually the difference maker here. In two rounds, he's been that third yeah. man over towards A, right? The first time he gets the kill with a Deagle, this time you're right, Rez didn't check whatsoever. And that could be because as soon as your kinder goes down, he's the bathrooms player. You know that James is going to be playing more passively with that AWP, less likely to be in a forward position. Now Sanji, he filled the gap, filled that space and found an influential kill. So. NIP do have one more buy round left in them here before the economy. We have to start asking questions, and they fully invested. Popsky even bought a Zeus. I think he just threw that one away. So AKs, no war. Once again, Molotov straight in towards Playground. Nork only taking a little lick of damage, not too much to write home about. Smokes towards Connector and potentially a different way of putting pressure on this A bomb site. We've seen the nade off the door and jump sprays, even boosts to hold the angle, but this time, NIP completely safe and sound. They smoked the door themselves. So VP are expecting more of a, a B side attack here, and you can see that just because this time they're not playing that thorn in the side of your kinder forward. James on the side. So hard to force him off of this angle. Safe from the flash. They're about to be overwhelmed here. This is quite quick again. Silence and there's a minute. Yeah, he's got no info. Nothing to report yet from Jane. You can do the same. This three-man B lean, they might want to start pushing for info now, but all too little, too late. Jane puts it between the wickets, costs him his life. Plopsky burns him down. Good Molotovs, good utility. This is the execute VP in a lot of trouble. I like the fact that your kind is playing for the retake here. In toilets, he can catch Rez. It's all about the element of surprise here. There is a lot of backs turned. Nork, though, gets info and the frag, a big frag to convert. Kick it's coming from T-Spawn right now. I feel like they should be, yeah, saving this. That was so far away on that rotation. 
You know how you were talking before about Astralis and if you play the standard game of Counter-Strike that they're going to beat you? Well, some of the things here that NIP are doing that are a little bit different from what you would traditionally see with A bathroom control, they're not always throwing that front bathroom smoke. And on this round where they just creeped up through connector, right? They hadn't had that normal utility. There was the Molotov towards Divider wasn't there. The smoke towards the front bathroom. No, wasn't in, there. no none of the uh, queues. Exactly. The flashes over towards Long, you know, they, they didn't have those same tells. They just walked up knowing that VP might be able to isolate one fight which they have done onto your kinder. And if they don't fight any resistance, they can just walk on and execute like that. Yeah, and a great point that Kassad brought up actually just in the, in the chat. He highlighted that when they frag Jame, for example, that double nade round, that's when they know that they can take some liberties on long, take some liberties on toilets, because that's Jame's anymore. responsibility. Yeah. And so it's something that they are keeping uh, their finger on. They know that Jame is a very, very oh, wow. Get the text going. Yeah. Go. Go ninjas. I think we'll get there by next time. So he's going to keep cracking away at that, and we'll keep cracking away at this. Uh, still, NIP making a case for the third map here. Those stack nades we were just talking about. Oh. Catching Sanji's jump peak down to 41. He lives to tell the tale, though. He'll regale us with his stories of the, that time I caught the double nade. Oh, the boost, and it doesn't convert your kinder. Quick reactions, that was entirely mechanics. Oh, ZTM might not clear this. This yeah. is a hard angle. Buster, very nice conversion onto short. It's not the first time he's held that comfortably. Hampus and Nork already so early into the piece with 70 seconds on the clock and already completely isolated. Nork is on his own little island. Looking for the elusive Jame. They have so much time to work with, it feels like NIP. I don't ever feel stressed on the clock with them. It's true. Even that last take on 2A, they had, what, 45 seconds? Yeah, and the fact that they're getting away with all this room, they've really done their prep work here. Jumping sight, well, jumping bank. So I might not get the look into the head that Nork wants to find just here. You can see why that's a favorable jump peak as opposed to the one behind dice boxes, where I swear I see hang time. so many orcs oh. find the way in. James has found the way out, though, and there is no issues here. Shooting. Six to three now. So VP, they have to do this the, the hard way, right? They've almost broken the money of NIP here. You can see that they're operating with 4.9 on the high end for Plopski, and at the low end, we're dealing with about 3.1 on ZTR. So this is a half by territory, or they can all in with the AK-47s and have Galils, UMPs, MAC-10s, those type of weapons supplementing it. But there was some good shots to kick this off. And you can see why NIP really are going for this style of play, because it's clear they can isolate fights, right? It, it doesn't feel like all the time that VP are playing off each other. It feels like there's a, a chance to isolate at least a 1v1 or 1v3 duel over towards these A bomb sites. So a little bit quicker this time. He's doing something different every round. James going underpass. It's always a risky maneuver as an orc because you can't get out. If your kinder goes down, James going to have left his A site wide open. Your kinder knows survival is integral here. James will have a very prime opportunity to at least find one. Quarters of the trade can tuck in, but the threat of him likely to slow. Smart by Jame. He can escape now through B because they have sewer control. He can dip all the way back through the B site, rotate back up to A and get there in time. But Mission the snake yeah. that is NIP is making their way, slithering through the bathrooms now. Those sound cues not there again. Ah, there's something. Bit of nade damage and a bullet fired. So looks like VP have completely stacked the site. Whoa, he's walking into the lion's den here. Hampus hunts your kinder. The flash does enable him to at least find one jumping ZTR. If he gets kick it, not quite. No trade, tucked in on Optimus. Flames will force him forward. A good shot from Jane. Poor Nork, disconnected now from behind his buster. Needs a precise tap. He's got no health and no hope. There it is, a fourth for VP, and we are getting competitive. They pick up four of the last five rounds of play, and NIP's lead is disintegrating before our very eyes. Yeah, and even with that extra money coming through because there was no plan, NIP will not be able to buy in this one. So to just be down to the pistols, finally they're humbled. Get two and a half thousand going into their bank balance for next round. And yeah, you're right. So James gets that opening kill. They have the stack on the site, so they've heavy rotated, knowing that he was unable to help out your kinder on the site. And then it looked a little bit labored from Buster there, but eventually finds the frag. Nork goes down. And a tech nine for Nork this time round. As we're back underway again, straight through the Molotov. Damage done to all five members of NIP as they quickly want to gallivant up long and see if they can find this gap. And while there is a huge gap right here, right now, nobody from VP is watching it. James about to get back around the corner and just in time. Bang! And the dirt is gone. Barry Scott here. Not gonna get the air and the next. Maybe there's a 
multi-kill for someone else. It's going to be Sanji who pads the stats nicely. Needed that. 10 grand in the bank for him as well. He has not been going too heavy on the investment. That's going to help VP for the longevity of these closing rounds of our first half. Second map. First game of the day. I'm just saying, uh, we haven't seen NIP really try to get stuck into B too early, right? It's always been through these A plays. So right now, if you're expecting VP to continue with these more three-man heavy A lanes, B might be on the agenda. Well, it looks like VP might be one step ahead. They're actually playing Yakinda right now. Aggressive Molotov again. Same as you like. And Have we seen a single forward. fast round out of like the, the, the Ninja's boys? We haven't seen like a B no, it's like pressure. A B rush. Now Yakinda's off angle has been found. Rez punishes. Didn't have to pay too much of a price for that either, so happy stuff. Sanji, a light tagging from Hampus, confirms there's at least one water. As soon as NIP are operating with this one-man advantage, I always feel like they're going to close these type of rounds. They stay together. Nobody seems to give up a silly death. They understand the space that they can punish. Look, your kind is dead. There either has to be a gap long or bathrooms. And right now, the long gap is being punished. You can see Rez, a lot of noise, a lot of space. He's doing this all in his lonesome right here. And they're really dealing with these That wasn't audible rotations. to James, was it? I don't think it would have been just far enough. enough. So look at this. James still has his back completely turned to this position. They know it's a gap, but VP are more than happy to give it up. And that could be their undoing. It certainly could. Hampus continues to keep them on notice at B. Now... Rez is going to have to work pretty damn hard if he wanted to find Jame. Oh, the punish! What a spray! Kick it! He's found one, tagged up another. Rez is in bank, but they might assume toilets is clear. This is an important frag from Jame. He knows they're coming back his way. Rez is the unknown entity. Jame's got some decisions to make. He hears them charging. He won't be able to contest. That's the bomb on Plopsky's back. Oh, okay, this is going to be weird. One tapped. Kick it's gone. But James, the unknown entity, if they plant bank side, they planted Optimus, he won't be able to stop it. And he's lost all of his teammates along the way. So regardless, that works out lovely from the ninjas. NIP have really done their homework on VP because it just feels like time and time again over towards A, there's always a gap and they always find the gap. And even when they found themselves in number disadvantage situations like that two on five, I think it was when Nork was alive with the AWP. They're even aware of the lines that they like to hold. They're jumping over them. They're being very cautious. So you can see why this is a home map for the Swedes, and here's Rez, just, yeah, Kicker has no idea. When that happens, you just have to be very frustrated. They know that the A-bomb site was given up, yeah. but the timing from when Jame called, it's more likely than not, to when he's actually there, it's way quicker than what Kicker would have been expecting. Yeah, these guys are not robots. You're not gonna have that calculation down. It looks like they're going for a little bit of a late boost. Okay, so Sanji just wants the info. They could wall bang it. It's double ops as well, so they've opted for a bit of a change up here, VTP. I think they feel like they're getting walked in on too much. They want to try and take the fight to NIP, and Buster's actually going to peer. He's been spotted on that jump. Has to be careful now. These next few rounds are going to be so, so instrumental as to whether or not this, we're going to see a third map here. Yeah, money on for both teams could be broken at any point. Just more slow stuff, so this time... A, again, bathroom's long, basically just given up off the get-go, just leaving Jane on Jame on the site. Bomb's being picked up now for Plopski, and okay, well, this gives us an indication. It looks like they do want to finish B. But if they can put any pressure on That's Jame, they might hi hyper-rotate. How are you supposed to put pressure on an AWPA when he's so far away? Rez is in toilets. The rest looking for the fight. Nork found. Nice work from Buster. He stands his ground on short. Monster is kickets. Another coming in from underpass. Rez all too familiar with what he may be peeking into. Oh, this flash as the smoke fades. They double peek it. Actually, re-smoking. Trying to catch them on the timing. Oh. It's glorious! A massacre from VP. Buster and Kickert saying, yeah, maybe you should go back to A. Oh, he's going back to spawn. He's going to try and save this one old Ampus, isn't he? That was a really good setup right there, and everybody from VP stays alive. So. Dude, but like the logical, like it's, it's smart. As one smoke is fading, he pop flashes as they deploy a second smoke, which if you're an NIP player, That's you're going to press pushing. W. Yeah. You're going to press W to. straight into a bloody flashbang. Look at this. You look like a plum. It's good stuff here, and I think that that AWP helped facilitate it, right? Because they didn't have to play so passive. So blind. They had a little bit of extra info, and yeah, that was... <laughs> Perfectly timed. Similar to how in the first map, NIP were doing a good job of holding on to some of their CT sided utility. That was really good from VP. And now the ninjas. We talked about rounds. the break. Yeah. Oh, this time out that they're taking. 
they already have seven, so you're happy. You're happy with this, right? You, you've got a smile from ear to ear. You've done better than what you did last time, and Plopsky hasn't need to drop 26 kills. So. A whole lot more convincing than, than Inferno as well. Yeah, precisely. So at, at this stage, if they can get one round, they're going to be really happy with that. One more, win the half, get yourself that eight. Seven is already very, very good. But they'll have to go up against the double orbs yet again. I wonder what's been talked through in this timeout. It could be that pace change, because you're right, we haven't really seen them just go all out, really fast paced Counter-Strike. Could even be saving that for the final round of play, just with the scrappy pistols. Been able to punish these gaps. So we've seen this a lot now. Molly, they smoke it out, extinguish, they aggress forward, they take space early, they don't throw too many of these smokes and mollies, and this time they Run might boost. be running into Sanji. Yeah, is he gonna hit the shot? He actually does, into the shoulder blade. Notice how they move the secondary orb around. Buster just had it, he's given it to Sanji for A. And now Buster's onto an AK, so they're keeping this very, very hard to read. And if they know one orb was long, they won't expect another orb here. Certainly not. And another tag. Two members of NIP have had their wings clipped. James down to 18 after that attempt to trade. Okay, so with just a one-man behold, they're in the right place. And James flushes another. Santi's orb is there as well. Can't help but feel that they're running into a bit of a trap. Kinder re-aggressing now. Keep mixing it up, trying to bait him in as well. Very powerful angle. You have to knock him off that one. Rez with utility from long to hopefully draw attention else away from these toilet players. A gap in the smoke. Another More tag. tags. Your Kinder's the one to finish off the job. Clean as can be. Not a single member of VP down. They'll keep all of their goodies. And by goodies, I mean two orps and three AKs, Chad. Yeah, and for Rez, there's another question. Do I go for this and try and take what I can? Or do I try and win? Like, we only have one round left after this, or do I save it? He doesn't even get a chance. Sanji takes him out. So that was a very good round. And I wonder if they, if Sanji throws that orp back across to Buster now, if they, if they change it back up like that, because that was a cool little detail right there that I only caught at the last minute and opened them up to push a little bit quicker into those toilets. Once they spotted the AWP on long, you saw how they wanted to get stuck in a little bit quicker. They walk into the AWP of Jame. When Jame got that first kill, he also tagged Nork through the wall. All right, well, it's just the Deagles, Alex. So if we're going to see something fast, this could be the round from NIP. It's uh, not the Tech Nines and P250s, but continuing with more of the same. So it feels like VP have finally got a good read on how to deal with this, but NIP got their lion's share of rounds through similar plays to this, so you can't fault them for going for it. They've gone for that connector smoke again. I mean, yeah, this half would have looked significantly more convincing for the ninjas if VP hadn't found that deagle conversion. That's true. Another one of those. Mm -hmm. And again, they've just parked themselves quickly up towards A. So three towards long, clearing out the top level of the bathrooms. Now they're going to saunter their way down to regroup with Hampus and ZTR who are coming through connector. They have nades for this, so they can smoke off the site. That's the smoke towards long, a flash as well. And they're gonna try and get up close and personal behind this. Now let's take a look, how do VP respond? Jame isolated in the site right now. Smoke goes out of his own. He has a rotator very close in your kinder, but they're not sold on this one just yet, VP. Definitely an A finish. Yep, double pump. One spotted, likely a rotate to be forced here. It's all about the execution now. The ninjas start to flood in. They're giving them the sight. They're choosing to play retake right here, VP. Is it just two Molotovs to hold them at bay for the after plan? Maybe that... That could actually give NIP a chance here to get a deagle round of their own. They jump down, spawn. Two of them are in. ZTR sneaking on behind enemy lines now. Game so switched on, he actually might find this. CTR, yeah, Rez can't trade. I think he may have been spotted. Caught by Buster. Perfection from VP. Rare to see teams so willingly let play for the retake and do so so cleanly. Kickit's always the late arrival. He likes to go monster through bloody T-spawn. But there it is. Virtus Pro will take the slightest of leads on the half here in NIP's pick. Swapping back in two.
Hey Future Pros! During ESL Pro League Season 12, I saw Team Spirit show off a nifty aggressive one-way on Mirage. Normally, I would never show you aspiring Future Pros a one-way, but this one's pretty cool and requires some teamwork. To do this one-way, you'll need two Future Pros. Future Pro number one, you will be throwing the short smoke. To do this, get into this corner. Aim in the middle of the gap below the far right window and above the close wall. Run forward and jump throw your smoke just as you get past the middle of this section. If thrown correctly, it should land perfectly for your teammate. Future Pro number two, you get to have all the fun. It's also very important that you have a semi-decent mid-spawn to do this. Head into the window room as fast as you can. I hope you've been playing KZ because you will need to make the short jump, so make sure you practice. If you nailed the jump and your teammate landed their smoke, then you will have a pretty cool one way to play around and over. And as always, good luck and have fun. It's Virtus Pro versus the Ninjas in pyjamas. IEM Calavita continues, and Virtus Pro, 1-0 up, one round up on the half. A machine, I've got Chad Birchall with me, and we are looking to see exactly how things shape up in the lower bracket. Chad, by, by no means is the, the battle to the playoffs over for the team that wins this series. It looks like it's going to be a very bumpy road, taking a look at that Group B upper bracket. Yeah, they have to play two more games, even if they win this one. They have to beat the uh, loser of Liquid versus uh, who are they playing? Vitality. Vitality yeah. Bloody Nora. That's uh, going to be a rough game for whoever wins this one. So, oof, let's see if this one has many more legs to it. The odds from GG don't bet are clearly favoring Virtus Pro. And as gets a bit of early info here, there's all five members congregated very closely around that connector and playground position. And early info here. So if they swing open the door, NIP are going to see nobody's home. Res behind the tree. This is rough. Yeah, he's going to have so many targets. Just way too many. He'll get overwhelmed. Did do some damage, but it's trivial in the grand scheme. Plopsy's already in connector. Kick it's still dealing with rotations. They're pestering long. There's no intent right now from VP with a lot of time Look left on this. the clock. Look at this. Decision making from Hampus is actually pretty spicy. He'll join Plopsky. They know Kicker is often super late behind the pack, but I mean, look how super ridiculous late. he late he is. Ha ha! He's got you again. Kicker strikes. Plopsky was trying to be aware. Now Hampus is vulnerable. The element of surprise is there. Oh, oh Kicker! He has had so much impact Going across both of these pistol rounds. Look at this. They're taking them all the way back. Yeah, ZTR has got the uh, the awareness to try and deal with that, but <laughs> bring around a Rosie. You can hear it all. Where are they going? I don't know They're anymore. All. They just went all the way back and now they're going all the way back to A. Okay. Oh man, kick it. You are mean. Nork doesn't have the bullets. But that's two T pistols in two maps where kick has got three, if not four frags. He's on for his third now. ZTR's the only one that can be added to the list. In fact, kick it's dead, so I'll just go cancel that dialogue right now. No, the impact's still there. I yeah. Hang on with what you were saying. The problem right now is ZTR has the kid, and if nobody's keeping their eyes on the bomb, never mind. He's going to play a little bit for, more forward. Now he's going to tap it. He's going to sit it. They have to clear it. <laughs> okay. We didn't really get to see a lot because he decided to look at the ground. But if you're curious as to why he did that, trying to keep his hitbox as uh, hidden as possible, I yeah. suppose, even though he's in plain sight. Turtle down, crouch, look at the ground, tuck your head in, hope for the best. 
I remember Most when it, it, it used days. to be a bloody nightmare trying to kill people on the bomb. The weird hitbox bug we had for a while. People love doing that spin around thing as well. I think that's been... Uh... There's a, there's a rule to do with how much you can spin around on that now. Oh, is there? I'm not like you're not allowed to have a bloody DPI switch and just wiggle us at 8,000 DPI. Yeah, I'm not 100% certain. I remember reading something. I might maybe get League Apps, get me how on the phone here to talk that one through. But Nork, you're in a trouble, mate. That flash. He's tucked in enough. Scouts, Desert Eagles, CZs for NIP's defense of round 17. Rez is pushing long. He might get a timing here if he's quick. Buster is just backing off now. Very hard shot to hit. Buster, keep him on notice. Zetiar's a lot to do in with the MP5. Chaos, but it's chaos they seem to thrive within. You're kind of just the one, though. Plopsky darts away. Going to play retake from short with Hampus. Bombs in, but you know, Chad, we talked about this. VP are not in a rush to plant once they get control. Yeah, they're very thorough about this. So as they take their time, they wait for these smokes to clear. That means the pistols can't be such a nuisance. And it even gives Buster a time to come down connector here and just clear out the flank. Doesn't need to swing open the door. With four players left as well. As soon as he opens that door, you'd think Hampus is in a prime position to punish. Look at the breaks that the VP have just put on here. Flash is over now. Oh, look at that. Sanji's flash completely denies the potential of Hampus' crossfire. Nor could have to really pop off on this scout. And he has got the oh, element of surprise. He doesn't find the lethal shot. That could have changed everything. That's Jame tagged, but not body bagged. Sanji's on site as well. Nork trying to pepper through the box. Kick it's healthy as well. Nork under scrutiny. Yeah, this one should be NIP saving. We were speaking about the one Inferno saving these pistols. They want to hang around and see if they can get a kill or not. But you can just see how tight VP are playing. They're this. playing okay. great Counter-Strike. Yeah. and. Oof. Plopsky's stuck. He can't get out. Buster has him tagged in. Rez, he's trying to pepper whatever he can. The other two are thinking of heading off now. Plopsky trying to make himself an escape route. But you're right, they are playing very good CS, but that's why it's also not explosive and brawly and crazy hyper exciting right now is because VP, the way that they're playing these scenarios is to mitigate as many risks as possible. And that's what Counter-Strike is about. You know, you don't take these risks, you don't make mistakes. It's just being aware of what, you know, all of the potential mistakes that can be made, like losing two players to, to the, the bomb. bomb. Yeah, that is uh, not <laughs> ideal in the, in the end of things. How appropriate. <laughs> but just for that kind of a round, you see how they take the side. Alex, we're going to put this in WoW terms. Um, so they pulled the aggro. Yeah. They pulled the aggro by taking the B bomb site. And then what they're doing is they're it using... Was not far off. Uh, Look at that. It's his neck. Just He actually took a step up the ramp just as he might have flicked on up to that head. So, yeah, that's a nasty tag. Could have been enough to start get, causing a bit more chaos if you lose a player. Taco here. Hey, machine. Taco here? I think there's a guy who looks a bit like Taco. Okay, so he wears a beanie and he has glasses. Yeah. Okay. It's, hi, man. <laughs> it could actually be Taco. I don't know. You can just found ZTR, so this is just this low buy right here. Is Look, this game feels like it's quickly slipping away from NIP, and we're saying that without seeing a gun round just yet. So let's... Maybe I need to bite my tongue for a second. It's just VP feels so commanding, even though they did lose a couple of extra players in that bomb explosion. They're just up against these pistols. They've already found the opening. They're taking their time. They're not going to rush any of these moments. They will have all five members over towards the B bomb site, ready and ready to go. Utility is on point. Molly towards the barrel, smoke towards the site. The flashes are good. The scouts smoked off. And guess what? They're going to take side control and probably pause again. That's really simple. I actually really like the you smoke short and send all your troops through monster. Because yeah. then if you're a CT and you're playing sandbags Ooh. or you're... Ooh. And Puss gives himself a Galil. They'll flash over, but that smoke gets re-smoked now. And they haven't had access to short this entire round. Yeah, that's uh, amazing how many resources. This is another thing. They're just kind of flipping the puzzle of Counter-Strike, yeah. right? That well, you take this, well, we'll take this. They're, they're happy to make the trade-off. But, like, your options are so limited. Like, unless you're actually planning to contest monster of four AKs charging at you, which is not an easy feat, then you just have to respect that short smoke or try and lurk within it. But I would bet that they're probably one of those flight paths, if not two of them, are spraying that smoke. Yeah, someone will be definitely keeping an eye on it, just like they need to be keeping a bit of an eye on Nork here, who does tag the bomb. He wants someone to have a look. It's mopped up. So bomb will go off. 12th round now for VP. And this is where we can see if there's really anything on the line for NIP. We're going to get into the gun rounds. I think they're the 11th round, not the 12th. Let me correct myself. 
You can see the frags on the site there getting absolutely swarmed from all different angles. Fantastic stuff from VP just to deal with anybody close. And well, let's take a look because Nork and Rez are heading over towards A. Rez has an M4. Nork onto the AWP. No defuse kits in play. Head armor has been prioritized. Opted not to, to Molotov the playground cross. Jane does get across. Nork a bit late on the reactions there. Dare I say it, a standard start. Yeah, and there's no early intent, and you can tell that by the bomb being down so passively, right? So they're just going out with the default spread, seeing what information that they can collect here before making any decisions. We're seeing Long given up as a gap right now for NIP with Rez and Nork both tucked in towards those bathroom positions, waiting for anybody coming quite quick. B has a three-pronged defense with Hampus in swing. He's in heaven right now. And you can see this passive setup uh, and what it wants to achieve. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There is a timing on long, right? At some point, Nork and Rez need to be aware that gaps that they were punishing in their first half can also be taken away from them. So I'm sure we'll see Hampus rotate back and pick that up late. But not too much room has been made. As Popsky's being kept busy here by Kickit. More spam through the smoke. Sanji in connector. They're really just parking the bus right now, VP. I think Still a lot of utility too. Yeah, Hampus' reaction off of Kickit being spotted. Monster is actually to rotate into A to support. Rez wants some information, but this could come at such a price. He's thread the needle. I wonder if Yakinda's expecting this. Oh, none of them are. And the door's open. He can get three kills on short here. If he doesn't rush it, he decides to go for the first. And he converts the second. Not quite the third, but damage is inflicted. Back to A if Buster goes now. There is. Hampus rotated into B. Nork will try and fill the gap, but Buster's got space. Oh, we know how powerful this can be, Chad. We saw it from the ninjas, now from VP. Smoked it off. Nork maybe going to try and linger through it, but they're already punching in the digits. Couple of seconds to spare. Can't contest. Hampus aware of the kick at presence in toilets now. I'll Three gathered bank. They re-smoke it. And despite the man advantage, okay. I can't help but feel that this leans VP's way. This is a tough round to retake, tough round to get back into. Conversation for the ninjas now. We're halfway ticked and there's no kit. Kick it, finds it, and another. They're running out of resources here. They're losing every single member of the Ninja's squad. It's just Plopsky. He's more interested in self-preservation at this point. He will find a safe haven in bank, but Vert is pro. These are the mid-round calls we were talking about. You know, one of the reasons I started this broadcast talking about how much fun overpass can be. That was great. That was exactly what I'm talking about. Vertus Pro, they worked their way through overcoming that double kill from a fast flank on their B take. And this is the thing, right? Buster needs to be operating with that in the back of his mind. What I mentioned is easy for me. I can see all the pieces on the board. Buster, for him to go, oh, Rez has pushed connector, killed two of my teammates. The only way is for us to go into A. If I make the space right now, we can win. For him to have that just happen so quickly, this is split second decisions. This team is operating super late round. So the fact that they get away with yeah. that right there is such a massive round because you're looking at it with Rez coming on the flank, multi kills. And that's a dream. And, and Nork, don't forget, like he was there in he was there in time. The only reason that that bomb went down uncontested was because of Buster taking that space with his in in initiative yeah. and dropping that smoke. And now they can really punish, right? Because the economy is in tatters for NIP at this point. Sure, they got the AWP. They can give that back to Nork, but their buy isn't going to be great. They're going to be operating with very little on some of their players. SMGs, one's been bought for Plopsky at this stage already. And they need to talk through how they want to operate here because if VP win this, they don't save any guns. Max loss bonus coming through. CT side economy is a cruel mistress. Everything is stacking up against the ninjas right now. They need to put a stop to this. They're limping in with half buys, right? Plopsky's purchased down to 1,700. Hampus there with 1,600. Rez yet to buy a pistol. See what he wants to operate with right here. So this is this is a half buy to back up the AWP. This can be threatening, this can be potent. We've seen what VP have done with Deagle so far in this game. But NIP really need to find some impact here because you can't be starting around like that and then being found a massive gap. Okay, so there won't be a kid again. And we're not expecting this round to be as scary as the last. This is just them trying to back up the AWP and give Nork more than a chance. And this is a great map for an orper to find some impact, especially on the CT side. If he's got any flair, we need to see it now. He's right to peek it. What on earth was that? Wasn't ready. They're hugging the close wall. Just enough of an off angle and only one from ZTR's Deeg. This all hinged on Nork's orp and he's been caught with his pants around his ankles, jumping in panic. Good flash, should be the frag, but the support there, that's nice work from VP. You can see the suppressing fire, reactive for our stuff from Kicker. Soon as Sanji's screen goes white, Kicker unloads his mag. 
just insane to me that the game of Counter-Strike can be played in this way where they just freeze. They don't have any presence over towards A. Buster is watching the flank. They're letting the mistakes come to them. And knowing they're up against this low buy, it's the right call. The AWP is already in no man's land. And as long as they can keep eyes on it here, VP, that's the biggest threat denied. They're going to walk closer to it to deny Plopsky with that MP9. No flashes. No hope. It's Plopsky needing a multi-kill. He does swing out for one. Finishes what Hampus' Deagle started, but it's VP that want to finish what they started on Inferno. NIP's pick and 13 is one frag away. There he is now, only a matter of time until Rez goes down here. Trying to just take whatever he can. And there it is, Jane will finish off the final frag. Should be able to pick up that AWP, so that's a freebie right there as well. And it's just getting better and better for VP. Orgs appear to be the answer. You can see two, two purchased on in there, so that's three scopes on the CT side. They will get a full buy with the max loss bonus. And that AWP, yeah, it must have been a, a mouse wheel hit as yeah. Nork has jumped out there because that looks so awkward. They were clearly far trying to set him up for success. Far from intentional. Far from intentional. Trying to set him up for success. And, and as the one of the star players of the team, especially the Orpa, you're going to feel frustrated about that one. Rez has actually brought out the second AWP here as well. Double A AWP setup. I've seen this team get exploited with gaps with the double AWP setups before. Perez is much more aggressive, really searching for a kill here, knowing they need to get something, get this round moving, get themselves a round, get themselves anything. <laughs> Gets late arrivals. I don't know why I haven't been addressing them so much or they haven't been so apparent to me before, but he is always just the tail end of this polar bear. Well, they're already in A. They yep. just walk straight up bathrooms and execute it. <laughs> what are you going to do, NIP? Like, what are you going to do? They've walked in with all their utility. Now bucket loads are getting thrown on the site. Honestly, you want to retake this, even where Rez is? You, they should save. Yeah. That sounds insane, but what are you meant to do? They've got every nade they could desire, and they just keep flashing, smoking. What are you... What? This is ridiculous. And, that, and you talked about gaps, Chad. You talked about exploiting those gaps. They just walked toilets and planted in about 30 seconds off the break. And against two warps, a setup designed to stop that. Rez, you get a kill, sure, but the bomb is already over halfway tick. <laughs> that is 14. Please. They didn't even have to do anything. Is they that, just had to walk past you. Is that based off of a, like a, a read? That's based off of having a player like your kinder in your team who you say, hey... Big man, go first, just walk, kill, we'll trade you. Yeah. He has so much confidence in the fact that his teammates will trade him. His teammates have so much confidence in he'll get that opening kill. And by the time you're out toilets, you're like, lads, I think we've done it. <laughs> it's like we're running onto the site. Rez was so far forward at long, he couldn't hear any footsteps. Nork was already caught in rotation. Oh. It was a gift. Yeah, let's see how this one shapes up. So the bomb's being planted at 1 minute 09. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. That's how fast they managed to get themselves all the way into A. Look how far, I mean, it's, it couldn't be further from T-Spawn. If you're playing fast rounds of Counter-Strike and that's what they look like, that is, uh, that, that's the type of fast rounds I want to play. It's a dream for Verta's Pro, and on the T-side, no less. Okay, well, they saved everything, so let's take a look. We'll pretend that last round didn't happen. Yeah, your kinder wants to do it by force. A change up of the pace already draws blood. They're boosting. Oh, Hampus surely booked. I'm assuming it's Hampus. It's actually Plopsky this time on the barrels. Well, we spotted the noggin, so I'll drop down. Well, they've gone one for one, and this actually favors VP because the CTs need to play for aggression again. Spam through the smoke, tagged on down, 14 HP. Perfect, of course. Doesn't <laughs> Oh, what a nightmare for NIP. They picked this again after what happened the other day. Plopsky going absolutely nuclear for and them. And he said it was a 16-13 as well. It was a close with game. Like a, with a Plopsky 30. <laughs> it was always a Plopsky 40. It's 37 kills, man. Yeah, you're right. I'm actually not doing it justice to say give it to a 30. Okay. All right. Ninjas in pyjamas. Developing. VP punishing, though. It still sticks around long enough to catch Plopsky. Rotating when against VP Push when kick. kick is still Oh, alive. the timing! <laughs> he pulls away in time. So three through the toilets. Tampus and Nork are in sight. So this is actually just going to come down to individual jewels and utility usage. 20 seconds. Molly's great to buy time. Tags up Jame. CTR with 14 HP is going to try his best to get back to the site. Hampus is gone. What a pre-fire. They know where he is. He's flashed. He's sprayed. And had plenty of time for the plant. They like to cut it fine. 
First round, Chad, the previous round, we just saw them plant at one minute nine. Now they planted at seven. <laughs> like, it's just the contrast. They can mix it up. They can chop and change the pace. NIP missing, absent without leave. They're on the back of the milk cartons. Gone. I want to get some heart rate monitors on these teams who play late round counter strike, late round counter strike like this because I want to see as we're ticking down from 10 seconds how they're holding their nerve because as I'm watching this I'm panicking right these teams are so slow this is just insane it, it, that that's re leaves no margin for error right the that way that they're playing this if Buster goes down while planning with seven seconds left and there's no trade potential that's the round we can see the way this looks they don't get the same opportunity of knowing where these players are isolated and they're still playing so late yeah amazing stuff good job on the replays as well Rez is holding long and Yakinda fancies his chances there's a trade coming oh. <gasps> a missed shot surely he doesn't get away with this they're re-peaking Rez does get flashed off he'll Desperately plead for one, but he doesn't get anything. Nothing to show for his adventure on long, and now VP four frags away from a 2-0, a convincing execution and elimination of the ninjas in pajamas here. Cream cracker, they are absolutely destroyed right here. Absolute destruction. Oh my God, I get it. It's rhyming slang. Uh, when you, you know, back in the day, I'm creamed. Mm. Cream crackered, knackered. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Anyway, we do see four players remaining for NIP. They're going to be doing their very best. We do see the smokes arriving. We know how good that short smoke is, but you can play in front of it. And Nork needed a multi. Maybe Plopsky Spray is the one to deliver it. It's close. It's competitive, but Sanji was ready for the flank. They're always ready for the flank. Buster elevated over the smoke, and that's enough. Verta's pro, baby. They'll be playing the loser of Vitality Liquid. And that's a big win. Verta's pro from the play-ins to the lower bracket round two.